What is going on guys? Space Kong here. So let's talk Morrowind. So if you guys probably already know, there's a trailer on the YouTube channel of Bethesda, that is. And they also released a Twitch stream talking about the new Morrowind DLC. Well, I mean, yeah, we can use the word DLC, but it's kind of like an expansion essentially because it's going to be the biggest DLC yet. And they're even releasing it like, on disc, like like you would, um, and you're like, say if you had the World of Warcraft expansions, you know. So you, you know it's going to be a big update. But we're a little way off from getting that. I mean, it's not even going to be the next DLC, it's going to be the one after that, so. But anyway, we're going to be getting that on the 6th of June, 2017. The reason for that is because on that date it would have been the 15th anniversary for Morrowind. Also, I believe it's going to be a continuation from the original main story, as it says, discover the next chapter, so yeah, that kind of hints towards that. But it's also going to be the largest DLC, like, ever. So far, anyway, to date, yeah, it's going to be the largest one. Um, which is fair enough, because it's going to be the whole of Vardenfell, which, if you guys don't know, it's the main island on Morrowind. If you ever played that game. It's a very good game. I highly recommend it. I sunk a lot of hours into that. But with this new DLC comes a new story and a new tutorial. And I say a new tutorial because you can start a fresh character on that island. So yeah, usually before when you would choose your character and you go to either one of the three factions. Yeah, you can go straight to Morrowind this time. And I'm not quite sure how they're going to do that because based on your faction is where you start out whereas if you start at Morrowind what faction is that going to be under control yeah you know, who's going to control that is what I'm trying to say I don't know um, is it going to be is it going to be three different locations to start in Morrowind based on your faction or is it going to be the same location who knows but the main thing I'm looking forward to I mean yeah obviously the map itself is going to be amazing and I really can't wait for it because apparently it's a complete reconstruction of the game Morrowind and they're going to try and keep it as close as possible and essentially this game is set 700 years before Morrowind so we all know that this game's a prequel anyway of any other Elder Scrolls games ever so how is this going to tie in with the story? and as everyone's been talking on YouTube we have a Warden class yes we have the next class available well it's the fifth class in total yeah we have five now yeah, five. I'm pretty sure it's five. But yeah, essentially they describe the Warden class as a nature magic user, which means that you can control a bear. Yeah. Yeah, a bear. A motherfucking bear. I don't know how that's going to tie into it, you know, with all the other classes. I don't know if it's going to be OP or not, because essentially it's called a battle pet. Uh, I knew about this before because obviously in the crown store if you've ever looked it says non-battle pets or non-combat pets which I'm not sure if you're aware but it's only been changed in the last couple of updates which means that they were obviously working towards having battle pets so it was a nice little hint there anyway but besides being able to control nature and a bear so I guess that's two of the class abilities I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess one's nature then the other one's like the bear itself and the attacks for the bear that's what I'm just guessing I'm, I don't actually know this yet but then the third class ability is of course ice. I mean, in all of our other classes that we have in the Elder Scrolls, we have the lightning, we have the fire, but we don't have the ice. So yeah, that's always been missing. But yeah, now we do have it. And essentially, what they've done with it is made it into a tanky kind of build. As you look in the trailer, you can see some of the skills. A lot of them are defensive, like the ice barrier wall thing that he makes. I mean, that's pretty cool. And you do have an ultimate. I mean, I'm not quite sure if it's the ultimate, but it looks like an ultimate in the trailer itself, where he does this overpowered uh, blizzard, which like blows everyone away. So yeah, I'm kind of guessing that's an ultimate. If not, then it'll be seriously OP. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's going to be game breaking? Do you think they're just going to like it's going to be completely out of balance or do you reckon they've actually fought it through? Or maybe it's going to be underpowered. But again, it says about controlling powers of nature, so it could even be a healing class as well as a templar. We could have our second healing class now. But of course we won't find out until we play it on the player test server, but that's not going to be out for quite a while. 
But if you would like to visit your old places in Morrowind like Balmora or Vivek City then yeah you can definitely do that. They've recreated it kind of like what they've done with Windhelm and Riften for Skyrim. So it's going to be a bit different because I don't know it's going to be 700 years prior to the events of Morrowind, the game that is. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be different, so don't expect it to be exactly the same, but the land layout and everything like that is going to be pretty much identical. As far as the story goes, we have a returning assassin, which is Naryu Viriam, which I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, but essentially, you know, if you've done the main quest for Urban Heart Pact, she is an assassin who works for the Morag Tong. So yeah, it's going to be heavily based around that. So she's going to be your tutorial guide if you start a new character there, as opposed to breaking out of the um, the prison in Cold Heart, like I presume. Anyway, they said that she's going to be there for the tutorial, instead of Lyris Titanborn. But the main story is around aiding the demigod Vivek against the new Daedric threat. And if you've played the um, Rothgar DLC, I'm not going to try and spoil it. Okay. If it's going to be a couple of spoilers, maybe, if you're interested or not, but uh, if you haven't played the Rothgar DLC, then, you know, don't listen to the next 20 seconds, starting now. So, if you've completed the Rothgar DLC, essentially, at the end, they say that, you know, the war has only just begun, when the Clockwork City's open, there's basically going to be a Daedric War. And I know the Clockwork City isn't the next DLC, but, you know, it could be a hint towards that, because it's a new Daedric foe there. Anyway, spoilers over. You can take your hands off your ears now. Not that you would hear me say that if you did have your hands over your ears. Never mind, moving on. Battlegrounds. Now, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get some battlegrounds up in here. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, essentially, what they're gonna do is they're gonna have loads of small little arenas. Uh, so there's gonna be multiple ones. It's not just gonna be the same one all the time. And you're going to have three teams, one from each faction, and they're going to have four players in each. And essentially, you're just going to duke it out and last one standing. That's what I'm presuming anyway. It's usually what a battle arena means. But they might have extra objectives. I'm not sure. But before, they did say about having a currency from battle arenas that you can get items and thingamabobs and wajamajigs just from the currency that you get from the actual arenas itself so you, you know you can't just buy it with in-game gold you actually have to do the arena battles to get that item which i think is really cool i'm going to be sinking so much time in the battlegrounds and next we have the new trial it's called the halls of fabrication now i guess that means where the dwemer are actually made judging by the title but you know i could be wrong but essentially we have this bad motherfucker here as the main boss uh, you see him in the trailer as well. I think his head's a little bit different. I'm not sure. I don't think he has this, the pointing on it. But yeah, this is the design, essentially, of the main boss. So, he looks pretty badass. I wouldn't want to mess with him. But, you know, I guess you have to for the trial. So, be warned. It's going to get tough. He's kind of like a super centurion. Oh man, got so much to fit in just one video. So, um, next after that is the... It's how you get it, essentially, the game. So you have the digital edition that you can just download as you would a normal DLC, which will probably, you know, take a little while. Or you can buy it on disc, which will probably be a faster download, but it might not be. I'm just, you know, guessing. But the disc for the physical edition comes with the base game and it comes with this as well. It doesn't come with any of the other DLCs though. Just the Morrowind one. And that's going to be $60. Or, well, yeah. $60 for the game. Or what you could do is get the collector's edition. Now there's going to be two collector's editions, one for the digital and one for the physical, which I think is kind of a little bit scummy because, you know, it's, if you want all the cool stuff, you're going to have to buy both of them. And that's going to be a lot of money, let's face it. So with the physical edition, you get a special edition journal. It's essentially Naru's journal who's the Moratong assassin and it's got like pictures and stuff which you know it's quite cool and all the artwork so that's nice to have but it also comes with a model of the new dungeon boss you know the super centurion big motherfucker so yeah you get that as well and also you get a map of Vardenfell I mean it's not a lot I don't know how much it's gonna cost probably a lot and as for the digital edition 
which by the way I think is way cooler but I want to get both which kind of sucks because I don't have that much money but anyway back to the digital edition you get a armored war horse which the armor is dwarven armor on your war horse which is really cool and I really want it because I'm usually not a fan of the horses but I usually go for someone else but yeah this horse looks amazing I'll definitely have that one and you get a dwarven spider pet with the you know the dwarven spiders with the blue plates on them as well yeah that's the one you get not the one you get from the usual quest you also get a warden bear and now I don't know if that's a mount or if it's just you know you can use that bear for the warden class I'm not entirely sure but you also get emotes, like a new pack of emotes. So, I mean, I guess that's all right. But you also get something called a Morag Tong Armor Converter. Now, it doesn't sound like a costume to me. Usually when you get the converters, which say if you bought the Imperial Edition, which means you can make an Imperial character and you can basically change any armor you have into the Imperial style. I mean, it doesn't mean you have the Imperial motive, so you can't craft it. In Imperial and then give it to other players so it essentially means that it's bound to you any Imperial armor that you convert over so it's basically going to be the same as that because we're going to get new motives but you know it's not been explained in depth that much what we're going to be getting so that's going to be left for another video but yeah the Morag Tong armor is going to be you know you're basically going to be able to convert it you know whatever armor you have to Morag Tong armor which does look pretty awesome uh, I don't have a picture of it but I will try to get one but anyway that's the gist of everything to do with the Morrowind DLC but I will be making a video later on when we find out even more stuff and I'll be going even more in depth I mean I know this video is like 12 minutes long or something so it's yeah this isn't even the in-depth version so the other one's probably gonna be I don't know way over an hour but yeah look out for that one because that'll probably be in the next few days but I will just give you a nice little taster of what's to come in the Morrowind DLC but anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have yourselves a great day. Peace!